Uganda, people leaving Uganda to Kenya. Now they are saying that if we not even a single something to test, not any protective measure, then automatically we are going to die from here. When I went to the health centers, they are all saying they want to leave the islands simply because the health centers have no any preventive measures taken. When I called the minister, Madam Speaker, the minister was telling me, we are aware, we are aware. But you look at how many boats from Kenya, and these policemen are saying we cannot check those people because we don't know how they are. So I'm appealing that the government should take information. Uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much, Member, for giving me the way. Uh, our borders are very porous. Madam Speaker, there are people who bought the aeroplane from Europe. They come and land in Juba. Then from Juba, they use the, 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 the buses, or taxis, or roads. And then there are those who, who bought the plane from uh, Europe. They come and land in Kisangani, in Congo. Then they use also the road and come to West Nile. So this is a very big problem which the government must look into. Thank you very much, Member. So my last word, Madam, Madam Speaker, it is very serious because when I ask the police what is the problem, they say the water is vast, but we don't have fuel. Patrolling the lakes, even the army is saying now we cannot patrol the lakes because we have no fuel. So I'm requesting you, Madam Speaker, instead of bringing problems to this country, why can't the government give these people enough fuel? Why can't the government make sure that all health centers, because we are far away from the hospital, that means you are going to have problems. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. On a Amero, then I think I go to Richika. Then we, we finish with the communication and go to others. Yes. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for your efforts in fighting this uh, very serious virus. Madam Koda, we have uh, a problem in this country and we are sitting on a time bomb. And the biggest challenge we have is that we have not really taken this virus as a very serious issue. Because if you can have people pass through the airport and have their way out of the airport, how do they get out? We are implementing the presidential directives haphazardly. We are doing it selectively because uh, yesterday I heard on media the minister was lamenting that some members of the first family or state house or uh, government officials are picking their relatives from the, the aircraft stand. So who are these ones and how do we know that they do not have the virus? Why should we implement these things selectively if we are trying to protect Ugandans? Madam Speaker, it is a big challenge and before we know it, we might begin crying like Italy. And uh, the other thing is that even here, we have members who have been traveling. We know ourselves, why don't we quarantine ourselves really? Eh? And if we are talking about taking a recess, Madam Speaker, the issue of taking recess and talking to our members is very important because our voters respect us and they hear our voices. When we speak to them, they know that the problem is real. But as it is right now, our people think this is just a myth and it is a story that they may never take it. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Now, honor members, no one has stopped you from going to speak to your people in your constituents on the radio. We haven't. We had the whole weekend, why didn't you go? And I've just said that we are arranging with Honorable Guang for you to record messages. Yeah. It's not because you are sitting here. Where, where were you on Sunday and Saturday? <laughs> now, honorable members, we have done enough for the communication. Ah, there are a few you. matters of uh, national concern, although I hear, Madam I see Speaker. that uh, the majority are about prices. Madam Speaker. About to personnel. Uh, I'm coming. Okay. Um, Ruchiga, I'm coming. Yes, <coughs> it's about. Uh, Cost of goods, <laughs> porous borders, etc. Et okay, Ruchiga. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for your communication. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm so concerned you talked about uh, borders. 
and it seems security is just concentrating on these big borders. For example, in Ruchiga, you know we've always had problems with Rwanda and uh, our security. We've always requested for at least a detach. There are many entries, illegal entries, where people are walking from our neighboring countries without even, people take a week walking, like in my constituency, we have 30 of them quarantined. And where even people are allowed to go there and do business freely. They sell them clothes, they sell them food, and about the Minister of Health. In Rukunjiri this morning they called me. There were like five of them who traveled from Dubai. I've been calling myself since morning trying to call these numbers they are giving us. They are not picking. They are not picking. This is a serious issue. And I think everyone should really come up. Information, please. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like to thank my colleague for giving me way. Right, Honorable Speaker, as I talk now, I was discussing with my DHO in the morning about 200 people from South Sudan. Right now, they are brought to Amoro and they are being kept in one of the schools called Bibia Primary Schools. And the DHO is stranded. He doesn't know what to do, and, and he said he's trying to call the Ministry of Health. They are not responding to him. Two hundred of them, two hundred of them, they're in the primary school. Is very for the information, Madam Speaker, I request the security. If they can really concentrate on uh, Ruchiga, especially that border, we have no security. Imagine from that border to the police, they are like five kilometers. People are walking, entering without any restriction. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Otherwise, okay. we really need to add on, we fight. This is not one issue. It is really getting out of hand. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Okay, the members on the task force on Amujiko you have had. Uh, well, are you meeting tomorrow? Are you, is the committee meeting tomorrow? So now you have what to tell the task force. You have had the issues of the members. You meet every day. Okay. So on our members, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, thank you. I cannot now give a statement as I earlier on told you, but I just would like to add also a little on what people have been uh, discussing here. One thing is we must know that our, do we call it Ministry of Dis Disaster Preparedness, is ill-prepared. We have always talked about being prepared, but this is not the case. Because now, with the coronavirus, we know that feeding, human being cannot live without food. We need food. We need food. And this food, government has to provide. So, Honorable Ila Runek and Honorable Musa Isuero have a lot to say on this. We cannot only task Ministry of Health. This is a multi-sectoral problem. When it comes to language also, we only we have the, mini, the, the president's communication in English. I think some formal and deliberate effort should be made to translate this into other languages. People are arresting. They are arresting people anyhow. You arrest people, you take them to the cells, and in case you learn on somebody who is already positive, you are going to kill very many other people. What measures have we put to ensure that those who have been arrested after the break, after the outbreak, are not mixed up with the, with the rest of other people? So it is important that we really need to take care of even the health workers and those who are highly exposed. We have the police, we have even the prison warders, we have the Iskaris who are highly exposed to, this, to, to getting this, this problem, disease. So what measures have we put in place to ensure that those who are highly exposed 
are protected, the health workers. These health workers have now their children at home. We have seen in some countries, you find a family is completely cleared. How are we protecting them? And what motivation do we give to them to do their work? So we also need those kind of motivation. Right, Honorable Speaker, it is a serious thing. And for me, what I said, I've been telling my people, that right now, you must guard your life jealously. Jealously, because it's your life first, even in the plane, when they, want to, when they want you to protect yourself. And you have a baby, your baby, on your lap. What do they do first? They say, first before you put your mask here, before you put the mask on your baby, first put yours first. Because your grave is your grave. So, that's what I can that's what I can say. I thought this is additional on what people have been saying. It is important that all of us as members of parliament care about our people instead of keeping ourselves here in Kampala. We go back home and try to also communicate to them. A lot of them do not know what? Do not know English. Maybe in other places, if you know English, in my places, some other people do not know English. Thank you. Information, Honorable Cecilia Gual. Thank you for giving way. Uh, I want to share with you this information. I appreciate the information we have been sharing. But at the same time, right honorable speaker, we have to record on the floor of parliament that the role that the president has played and you have played is commendable. The role that the minister of health has played and our team is commendable. And I think we need to record that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, right honorable speaker, the leader of opposition has raised the question of adequate preparedness for disaster. I think that is a matter we cannot ignore. Parliament willingly gave 15 billion and we had expected that your institution should have been requested to go out and talk to people about lockers, how to prepare, how to preserve the food for any future disaster. Nothing was done, no accountability on that 15 billion. And I want to make a request through you, right honorable speaker, that the Minister of Health and our team has been overexposed. The story of Dr. Luquia is still very fresh with us. He played his role with passion, and he died. And after that, there's nothing that the government was able to do. But that man died for the cause of saving lives. We are now seeing the daughter of Uganda, Ruth Cheng, and her team exposing their lives, going and interacting with these people who have come from the plane. And they are definitely compromising their own health situation. Now, right, Honorable Speaker, this parliament is aware that people have been given golden handshake for doing their normal duty without risking their lives. But there are people who are risking their lives for saving the lives of Ugandans. And nobody is talking about any kind of reward, any kind of special protection. So, right, Honorable Speaker, these are the information I want to give. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Cecilia Wall. I just would like now to add... I would like to add one thing. Is that Chinese have managed to control their own situation? Can we not borrow a leaf from them? Exactly, we have to borrow a leaf from them, but I don't see the... I don't see other ministries being vigilant 
in trying to borrow a leaf from them. Let us borrow a leaf from China and let us make sure that from one it went to nine and it should never go to ten. It should come down. I want to thank you very much, Honorable, Right Honorable Speaker. He wants to say something, he can say yes, no, no, right no, 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 members, no. Let's do, please. Honor members, I think we've done enough with the communication. I just want to remind you, I want the members of the task force to stand up. Honorable Mujuke, stand up. Honorable Batiku, stand up. Honorable Arinaitre, stand up. Honorable Nyakun. Those are the four members we have sent to join the National Task Force. If you have issues you want them to take to the meeting tomorrow, they are supposed to meet every day. Those are the four people. Give them the issues you want to take the National Task Force, the concerns. National Task Force. Our Health Committee have named the four members of the Health Committee who will also follow up. But that's a National Task Force. Okay. Let's hear from the communication and then we'll go back to order paper. Madam Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker and Order, colleagues. order. Madam Speaker, I'm here to, to respond to one issue regarding the dissemination of information. It is true, as a ministry, we have tried to disseminate information which the President has been giving onto the, our local languages. It is also true, we are calling upon all of us here to work with us, and I want to begin by thanking the Right Honorable Speaker for accepting to give out information in the local language in Lusoga, and also in English as a speaker of the National Assembly of Uganda. As a ministry, we are going to work with Commissioner Wakajara and Commissioner Mwijiche to come up with a program on how all of us here will be able to give information to our constituents. We are committed to doing that as far as the Ministry of National Guidance is concerned. Colleagues, the issue of this pandemic is very serious and I want us to lead by example. Madam Speaker, it's really very unfortunate, forgive me for saying this, colleagues. First of all, government took a position that all of us who are from Dubai were meant to be in the isolation center. So for us to be here as members of parliament, what does it show to us? We defy the orders from those officers who are in the front line. So we really want to beg. This war is a war for all of us to unite to fight this pandemic. It is very, very important. If, if all of us are observing what's happening in Italy, if all of us are observing what's happening in other parts of the world, I can believe you here that we are headed for either the best time or the worst time. But Madam Speaker, as far as our national guidance is concerned, we are ready to work with all members of parliament to give out information. We are even going to help you work with FM stations across the country, across your constituency, to give you air time to sensitize the people on this specific problem of coronavirus. Yes, Honorable Sereko. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Guang, Minister of State for Information, for the information you've uh, given to this House. The clarification I would like to seek from you is that the President started disseminating this information weeks ago, and it has taken time for this information to be translated into different languages, given the placards that are outside there and any other information. But notwithstanding even that, uh, Honorable Minister, there was a matter that this Parliament raised uh, on Thursday, and that was the matter of the $100. Member after member rose up and stated that the $100 would be grossly expensive for many people that are returning and may expose our people 
who are susceptible to corruption to accepting this money and freeing people to go back home. And indeed, hardly had we even finished making that statement than we were awash, that, uh, than we were awash with the information that many people had been let to go home because, and when those people have been found, they have been recording videos and saying, we could not pay for the $100 per day. So the information we'd like to get from you, Honorable Minister, is how do you inform the members of the public that are coming from other countries, for example, Kenya on buses before you close borders tonight, that there is a guarantee that they will be isolated without necessarily paying such huge sums of money. Madam Speaker, I have the Minister of Finance here. As far as we are concerned at Cabinet, a position was taken and I would like to request the Minister of Finance to come and address the issue which Honorable Nsirek has raised. For the $100? Yes. As far as the issue of the $100 is concerned. The cost of isolation? Yes. Okay. Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, first of all, I want to thank my sister, Honorable Cecilia Ogwar, at her age, the way she was running is wonderful. She, did you see how she was running? So Cecilia, I congratulate you to be in very good health. Now, turning, order, to, order. turning to some sensitive matter. Order, members. Yesterday in the cabinet we discussed this matter of quarantining people in hotels which they cannot afford and neither can your treasury afford. So we have decided, and I hope something is being done by now, to transfer them into schools. Yes. Yeah, there are some schools in Entebbe. We order, order members, order please. We will, we will create or we have already created facilities to make them comfortable enough. We shall take their mattresses. We shall take or we have already taken. I have, I have yet to check with the, the minister responsible. Order, order. But in short, these people are now not going to be confined to be taken to hotels. We realize that hotels are, were too expensive. Many of them could not afford, but neither, because there was a suggestion that government should pay. But your treasury, with all the problems that we are facing, is unable. So, starting, uh, do we remember which, which day? Starting with tomorrow or today? Hmm? Yeah, within a few days, they will be transferred, will be transferred to those schools. Now, let me use, Madam Speaker, an opportunity. Let me take this opportunity to also give, me, give a bit of information on two issues. Guarding the border. On the statistical chart of the World Health Organization. That was at the bottom, but we graduated to almost one number 25, and that's...